start there from Shakari Richardson. Really good start from Julian Alfred. You expect that she's uh, leading at the moment. Shakari Richardson coming better and getting ahead and winning comfortably. A one meter win there for Shakari Richardson. 10.83 for Shakari Richardson. The time matters not, it's the manner of the win and the, how comfortably she won. Brilliant second half from her. Julian Alfred, world indoor champion, we knew would be quick over the first half, and indeed she did lead. But Shakari Richardson carried, uh, sort of caught her up, hoovered her up almost through the second half very quickly, and then eased away from her top, top field. There it is, the season's best for Richardson. 10.83, a really comfortable win ahead of, win ahead of the uh, world indoor champion, Alfred. Solid start from Coleman, just eases away from Omignano. Omignano, the powerful Kenyan, just beyond him, he's got some work to do in four. Omignano trying to come back at him, and he is coming back at him, but he runs out of track. Great run there from Coleman. Yeah, it was interesting, wasn't it? Uh, you know, the 100 metres hasn't really caught light yet, has it, this year? So far, we've got plenty of time to go, and Coleman will be delighted with the win here. But Omignano, who's normally, you know, he gets out as well, but we know Coleman is so good out of the blocks. But Omignano is very strong here in the last 20 metres and almost gets there. Both of them under 10 seconds, which is good, as you're saying, it's a bit cool. Nice following win, plus 1.2, but that's a step forward for Coleman, I think, and winning is a great habit to be in. 995 for Coleman, Omignano rewarded with a, a sub 10 second plus, albeit he'll have liked, preferred to win that one, but that's a, a fine contest, if not super fast. Good start from Holloway, bad start from Parchment. Japan, good start for third to left, but Holloway going away with this one and moving further away from holding this together. Cunningham going one and two. But uh, Holloway's leading this one and winning by a metre and more. And Roberts gets second place to world number one at the time. 13.05 and more or less still there. Very slight headwind, but that underlines his 13.07 last week and uh, on a specially constructed track in uh, Atlanta in a park on the uh, edge of the city. We ran 13.07 there, and quite a strong headwind. 13.03, in fact, for Holloway. That is the quickest time in the world this year by almost a metre, and that is a very, very dominant run. And easily, I mean, Parchment was absolutely nowhere. Doesn't get out of the blocks. He's obviously got a bit of work to do. He does finish uh, strongly, Parchment, but that first, up to that first hurdle really gave him no chance. Watch Benaric with that headband in seven. Very, very strong, great 100, 200 and 400 metre run. A great running from Courtney Lindsay though in lane six, the world number two this year. Benaric goes strong through the second half of the turn, holding the lead at the moment. Lindsay trying to come back at him desperately, but Benaric straight, easing him clear by a metre and a half at the line. And the time, 19.89. Of course, in the men's sprints in the US, they've got to be good. Uh, you know, fairly early season, certainly going into the trials because it's tough to make the team. But if he can keep this going, he's going to be right up there with a great chance at the Olympics. Well, there it is, Benaric, 1989, nicely separated from the rest by the 22nd Barry. Lindsay King and Van Bula, second, third, fourth. The one, two, three for the USA, though. Those US Olympic trials, by the way, getting underway. Maggie gets a pretty slow start, the Estonian in lane six, and already up on him. CJ Allen and Rochon Clark starting very, very quickly as well. Maybe Clark has just got a slight advantage just watching them rise down the back straight. The young Jamaican really has attacked this hard through the first 200 metres already and he's just moving alongside CJ Allen who you would expect certainly to contend here. But Clark showing that he has the maturity at age 19. He's just getting better all the time, full of confidence, hurdling beautifully as well. So it's Clark who comes into the lead in the home straight. CJ Allen's always very strong over the last couple of barriers and also going well is Drummond. And it's Drummond now starting to drive on. Maggie's finishing quickly. Clark just checks it and that hits it hard. And it's going to be Drummond who comes away. Maggie's going to come through for second place. Drummond takes the win. That's a surprise, 48-57. This is what Melora does, she looks as though she's beaten and then will try and respond, but look at Hodgkinson round the outside and now has the lead, it's been a perfectly judged race, Gemma Ricky finishing quickly on the outside as well, but Keely Hodgkinson has done this perfectly, run her own race, forgot about Mary Morris' tactics, kept it even pace, and that's a great win, a big, big win, 155-78. That's how to do it. Ignore Morris' tactics. Don't go with her on the first 400. Stick to your plan. 
and then finish strongly. That momentum, that swing through when Mora has slowed, don't stop, just go past and keep going, and that's what she did. That was brilliant. Normally, Inga Brinson would come to a race like this and demand the pace. In the technical meeting yesterday, everyone looked around the table and said, no, he's not asking for a pace, and neither did Kerr ask for a pace, so they are going to go 153. Has Inga Britson got anything? Normally, from this part, you'd back Josh Kerr in the home straight, and he's ahead of the Norwegian. This is great running, though, from Inga Britson. Josh Kerr's battling it out. Inga Britson trying to get there. This is going to be so close. It's going to be incredibly fast as well. Josh Kerr heading for a very quick time. Josh Kerr. That is a new British record. Once held by Steve Cram, and I'm so pleased that <laughs> Josh Kerr has been able to hold off, and I have to say, an impressive. Let's hand it to Inga Britson. That was tough. On their way to head down towards 14-minute territory. Remember the uh, world record. 200 meters to run. Now, the strong runners in one and two. The speeds are in third. Have they eased the speed out of her legs over these last four or five laps? It looks like they have. And we have a battle now between Gebre Salama, Sigi Gebre Salama, the half marathon specialist, the stronger of the two. But has she got the legs against Taye here? It's a real battle for the last 50. Taye on the outside. Gebre Salama makes it down to strength and takes it by a meter. 14-18, the fastest time. First six home in the women's 5,000 meters then from Ethiopia. Sifan Hassan, the first non-Ethiopian for the Netherlands, finishing in seventh place in 14-34. Back to the drawing board for her. But we don't know what she's doing in training. Confirmation of that win for Kebri Salamra, world lead. 23-03, came in round two. That's the world lead for the 34-year-old. He's in wonderful form. I think a couple of times he's, in recent years he's looked at retiring, but he keeps coming back out. His 14 family members have booked tickets for Rio, the Olympic Games, even before he made the standard for the uh, Olympics. Now, he can be confident. Can he go better? He may have done. Wow. Confidence is a wonderful thing. Winning is a great habit. And he's going to take some unseating from this sort of form. It's a lovely series. His fifth round effort was a 22-53. 23-13. He's so close to his lifetime best. Joe Kovacs. Wow. Couple of efforts over 23 metres. I said how tough it is to raise your game psychologically when he pumped out a big one early on. His 23-03 was in round two. 23-13. Coming in round six. And real daylight between him and the rest.